In late November, Pheasants Forever hosted a group of Minnesota hunters on a pheasant hunt at the Johansson family farm near Tolstoy, South Dakota, where the landowners are balancing a profitable farming operation with abundant natural habitat for pheasants and other wildlife. The Johansson's 5,000 acre farm supports up to 6,000 pheasants. About 1,000 are harvested every year, and we did what we could to help that number out. A sorghum corn and sorghum on that side. Sorghum is a popular crop to plant for wildlife, particularly pheasants. The fields are easy to walk through and the stalks are short, so you can see a lot better than you could in other fields like corn. Sorghum also provides the best of both worlds for birds, cover that provides shelter from the weather and predators, and also a valuable food source. Look at them all getting up. There it is, and... You know, they might be getting up a little, a little far, a little wild. We're walking over some too there. I'm sure we're passing some. Yeah. Especially some of these hens that are holding tight. This is what it's all about right here though, watching all these birds get up. Oh, hen. <laughs> Literally, three feet away from me. That'll get your heart pumping. That will get your heart pumping. Those long shots are tough. I mean, you got a probability of maybe knocking them down, but usually when you do, you wing them. Yeah. And, there it is. Uh, nope. Probability of finding them sometimes on those long shots can go down. Sometimes they'll hide so well, you'll walk right next to them. Sometimes, though, they can't hide from a dog's nose. Oh, she picked one up. Hold. Hold. What do you got there? Rooster. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Usually, they're always hens when they catch them. That's two days in a row she's picked up a rooster. And it's, it's fun to watch a dog pick up a bird like that. You don't see it with roosters very often. But that right there shows you what these birds are doing when you got this much snow on the ground. And she stuck her head in the snow and came out with the bird. That's a good dog right there. He says, you don't worry about shooting. I'll handle it. Rooster, rooster. Nice, here you go. Pheasants aren't the only upland game bird in South Dakota. You'll also find Hungarian partridge and prairie grouse like prairie chickens and sharp-tailed grouse or sharpies. We walked a mixture of food plot strips and cattail sloughs during our trip to South Dakota, finding pheasants in each spot. That's part of what I like about hunting this time of year. Sure, it's cold and there's a lot of snow, but generally, you'll know where to look to find birds. Find food and cover, and you'll be in the right neighborhood. Now, there's no question we want to find roosters when we hunt, but we'll take an afternoon of watching the dogs work and flushing hens at close range. It still gets the adrenaline going, and seeing this many hens gives you hope for the future. We also spent some time in the public lands nearby to see how they compared. There's got to be some birds in this spot. We got a little secluded cattail slough here. Dog is going crazy. We got tracks in front of us. Just heard the loser. There he is. Took me a minute to identify that bird. Well, that rooster got away, but there will be more birds to come, even if some of them are hens. A late season pheasant hunt can be a challenge with cold temperatures and deep snow, but if you can brave the weather and go to an area that has the habitat to hold birds, you should be able to find them. Having a good dog can help too. While these snowdrifts weren't always the easiest to walk through, it's all just another part of the Johansson's plan. Keep stubble in the fields all winter and it will hold that snow and keep it from blowing off. When that snow melts, the ground gets the moisture it will need that spring. Creating habitat isn't just about planting grass and then driving away from it. There are many ways you can provide food and cover for wildlife while still making a living off the land. After the hunt, I talked with our Pheasants Forever host, Anthony Houck of White Bear Lake, Minnesota, who I called the master illusionist. 
Because you made some pheasants appear. Actually, it wasn't you. It's the Johansson guys at this farm. Talk about how important it is to have a farmer care about wildlife and do what they've done on this property. Well, it's it's important on uh, probably multiple levels. Number one, they're, they're, just the fact that there's birds here. You know, we got to see that today. They're contributing to wildlife habitat. Uh, they have a great operation. The other part of it that's pretty important is like the Johansson farm is kind of like a model farm for the habitat mosaic. I mean, it's a working farm, they're profitable, they have pheasants, deer, other wildlife, and, and they're better salesmen for that message than almost we are, you know. I asked fourth generation farmer, Eric Johansson, how they were able to provide so much pheasant habitat and still maintain their bottom line. What you guys do here is you, you kind of find that working balance. You're able to uh, have a, a profitable farming operation and, and grow crops and have that, agri that production agriculture, but also provide habitat. Talk about some of the ways that you do that. Uh, well, we're in a unique uh, geography here where no-till um, works really well for us. So we don't till any of the soil. Um, we leave a lot of the standing uh, crop stubble in the fields. Uh, which provides different habitat, not only nesting habitat in the spring of the year that most people don't think of, but also winter habitat. During the wet years, the Johansons don't drain their sloughs. And after harvesting in the fall, they plant cover crops that not only build organic matter and keep soil from eroding or blowing away, the crops also provide food for pheasants and deer. Some of the Johansons' farm is left idle in grasslands with wildflowers or forbs mixed in to attract pollinators and insects that pheasant chicks feed on. Cattle graze the grasslands and small fenced off sections for limited periods of time, a method called rotational grazing that preserves habitat. Obviously, um, we, we, everything in our operation we try to do to benefit wildlife. Um, we take great joy in having pheasant numbers on our property and, and anything we can do, the little things can add up to make a big difference.